So welcome to the small business to grow dot com making more money while working less. So if you're a young entrepreneur, you need to ask yourself the question, do you own a business or a job? And we're going to talk about three ways to know if you actually own a business or a job and three things you can do to change it. If you're like most people, you started out working, maybe you had an idea of owning your own business, working for yourself, being self-employed. Maybe it was in college, maybe you finished college, maybe advanced college degrees. At any rate, you equated owning your own business, being an entrepreneur with money and being able to stack up the $100 bills. But what we've seen from experience is there's plenty of people that are self-employed and really that's just what they are. They own a job, they don't really own a business. And we're gonna talk about three ways to identify whether or not you actually do own a job and are self-employed or you own a business and you're self-employed. And there's, there's a very big difference between the two. So the first thing, how do you know if you own a job and not just a business? First is time. Okay, this is an old school time clock. Some of you have seen these UZs punched in and punched out, start of the workday, break time, lunch time, but it's time. Uh, your ability to make money is directly related to your time. So you're up early, you're up late, you work the weekends, you know, there's always one more thing to do. There's always something that isn't finished. There's always extra things on the weekend that have to get done or in the evening before the family's up, after the kids are bed. So it's one of the first markers of somebody that owns a job is they're always working. And not only are they always working, but their ability to earn money is directly tied to the always working. Second way that you can start to identify whether or not you own a job or you actually own a business and are functioning like a true entrepreneur is this. You wear every hat. I'm guilty of this. I owned a brick and mortar commercial health club. I did everything. I was the repair person. I was the salesperson, the marketing person, the HR director, the trainer, you name it initially. And it's kind of like this, this image of the, the minions where you're one minion, but you're doing all things in your business. It, it could be answering the phones. It could be scheduling things. It could be doing a little dance, which really that's what it feels like when you own a job. It's all you. And your, your days are full of, you know, countless scrambled tasks, handwriting stuff in a planner book, trying to answer the phone, trying to watch reports, if you even have time to run reports, forecasting, sales, your expenses, all of those things. So that's point number two. So point number one, if you own a, a job and not a business, is your time and the fact that you're always working, there's always more to do. Point number two, if you own a job, is you wear every hat. You do the sales, the marketing, you answer the phones, you're the janitor, and not that early on there's anything wrong with that, but long term, if you want to actually behave like a business owner and a true entrepreneur, you can't wear every hat. Um, point number three, and this is huge, are you working for peanuts? And this is tied directly back to the fact that you're always working. <clears throat> the up late, up early you know, you're forever punched in, you're never punching out. When you start looking at how many hours you work and you look at the return, you're probably working for pennies instead of working for the hundreds of dollars that you expected when you first started thinking about being a business owner, being an entrepreneur. This is huge. Uh, a lot of business owners are guilty of this. They spend all of their time working. And yes, there might be decent revenue coming in, but when you look at it from the standpoint of revenue per hour invested working, sometimes really you're working for peanuts per hour. And in some cases, you might really be better off just getting a job. Uh, and, and again, as long as you continue to put in those long hours, 
point number one, if you own a job and not a business and you're continuing to wear every hat in the business, point number two, when you own a job and not a business ties right into point number three, which is it's really hard to make good money because you're spending too much time relative to revenue. Now, the good news is you're not stuck. So what do you need to do? You got to take action. Your action changes things. You got to get out of the habits you currently have and develop some new habits. And this sounds like a lot. And for those that have been in business for a while, it might be a little bit of a daunting task. You may be looking at it saying, how am I going to possibly work less and make more money? If I'm going to do things differently, I'm going to have to work even more. And I'm already getting up early, 5 a.m. I'm already going to bed late, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Good news is take a deep breath. Many business owners have realized these things. Many business owners, including myself, have gone from owning a job to owning a business. And the good news is if we've all been able to do that, so can you. And there's a process or a path forward. It's not terribly difficult. It's just going to have to take you making a conscious decision to take action and maybe start doing some things differently. And initially that might mean a little bit more time spent working. A lot of times what we find is you work the same amount initially, but we start changing what you're spending your time on. And let's talk a little bit about that. What are you going to spend your time on? So these are the three things that are going to help you break out of owning a job and help you start shifting into being an entrepreneur that actually owns a business. So step one, your tasks. We went through this a week ago with one of our clients that currently is in, is in that boat. Uh, he owns his job. Yes, he's self-employed. Yes, he gets some flexibility. And yes, on the surface, it looks like there's a decent amount of revenue coming in. But when you look at the 13 to 16 hour days that he's working, and we start looking at how much money he's really making per hour, we go right back to that pennies per hour. So the first thing we told him is, what are your tasks? What are you doing every week? Make a list. Make a list of what you're doing over the course of a week. So that could be get your phone out. And every time you do something related to your your business, just put it into the notes section on your phone. Or if you want to go old, old school, grab a notebook. And I like Sharpies and a Sharpie and start taking notes. Just write out what those things you're doing week in and week out. The next thing that we instructed him to do was take that list and break it into pieces. And then for each piece, how do you do it? And what we're trying to do is we're building a list of weekly activities that have to get done to make the business go. And then we're taking a look at that list and we're going to write work instructions, standard operating procedures, the how to. It's kind of the Stephen Covey, seven habits of heavy, uh, seven habits of highly effective people, where Stephen talks about teaching his son how to maintain the lawn. You're going to walk and talk and explain so that someone else could do the task. And why are we doing this? Because we want you to start to shift. We want our client from last week to shift from being the minion with that wears every hat to being, you know, the leader, uh, felonious grew that is now going to be the business owner. And we're going to start defining what tasks on the list can be delegated. And we're going to define exactly what it takes to execute that task so that we can build a system and we can teach somebody else how to run the system. So yes, for a lot of folks, that means that you're going to be looking at getting additional staff or employees. And for some people that might be hiring your first employee and might be hiring your 10th employee, but you need to start to be able to delegate. And the most important thing, understated thing is, is going to be that how to. If you have tasks that you're expecting to get done, you need to define, here's the list of tasks, here's how to do the task. And in doing that, you're going to be able to build a system. And that system needs needs to include you teaching 
that new employee how to do it, what it looks like, and then telling them how to do it. So we call that show and tell, tell and show. We teach it to that that new hire, and then we ask them to teach it back. And to teach is to learn twice. So this is huge. I've always done this with my staff. And every business we consult with, we tell them to do this when they're developing staff. Show and tell, tell and show. Teach and then have them teach it back. Why? Because when you teach it, you learn it twice. And again, you have to be crystal clear in what you expect the outcome to be. So you're going to make the list of tasks. You're going to create instructions on how to do the most simple task. So let's say you have a landscape business and that includes using a weed whacker to weed whack a customer's property. You need to be able in simple terms, communicate to your new hire, what it means to weed whack, how to weed whack, show and tell, teach, have them teach back and then show them the outcome and say, now see what we did this is what it looks like when it's done correctly. If you fail to do those things, the employee is not going to do things the way you do. And you're going to be upset, disappointed, and you're going to likely blame the employee. But the onus is on you. If you fail to clearly explain to that new hire exactly what you expect and they don't do it your way, it's because you didn't clearly communicate what your way means in terms of how you do it and the expected outcome. The other thing for a lot of folks is that means you're going to need to get payroll. And once, yes. So if you're sitting out there and you're like, well, I don't want to do payroll and I don't want to pay taxes. If you're trying to do things for cash, you don't own a business, you own a job. And you need to behave like a real business. And that includes getting payroll. And that means you need to be getting paid. And ideally, like employee number 172 here, that's getting the big check. You need to be paying yourself every pay period. And yes, you need to be getting the big check because it makes everything worth it. And again, if you're not currently using payroll and you start getting employees, you need to be using a simple payroll uh, processing company, something like Sure Payroll. That's what we use. And I've used paychecks. I've used the Intuit version when we had many employees. The Sure Payroll is lower cost, but it's going to offer everything you need if you're just getting started and if you currently have no employees. Do not try and do payroll by hand with pen and paper. Don't be writing checks out for your employees. It's too easy to make a mistake. And when we look at owning a business, not owning a job, owning a business, two things that will get you in trouble is one, not paying your employees and two, not paying your taxes. And you have to take care of your, the withholdings and tax obligations for the employees. And there's a right way to do it. And the easiest way to make sure you do that right is to get a payroll service. Point number two to in being a business owner and not just owning a job, you got to build systems. This place right here, you can go almost anywhere on the planet and get a Happy Meal. And that Happy Meal is going to have a sandwich or nuggets. It's going to have a side, typically fries, a drink, a toy, and it's going to come a cute little box. Why? Because it's a simple system. And McDonald's can teach that system to anybody. If you think about McDonald's and you think about the Happy Meal, a new hire can successfully make a Happy Meal. Everyone watching this video can easily, if they've never worked in a McDonald's before, never worked in fast food, you could probably with great accuracy go to the drive up window and not screw up putting a Happy Meal together. So your business should be the same way. And that's why it's so critical when you're defining the tasks you do week in and week out that you write clear how-to instructions along with the goal and the intended outcome of that task. The reason we're building a system and why do we want to build systems? Systems run the business, people run the systems. As long as you have a clear system, you could teach someone else to do it. Part two is 
we need to start looking at the right technologies and leverage the right technologies to make it easier to systemize and make it more efficient to run your business. So what does that mean? Typically, it means lowering your cost of doing business and increasing your profitability. So you've got to start simple systems, leverage technology. Here's a great example. A lot of you out there, if you've got a service-based business or you meet with customers, you meet with potential clients, if you're not currently using some type of digital scheduling appointment software, you don't have a simple system for making appointments and you're not leveraging technology. Instead of having to go back and forth, call, leave voicemail, send a text, send an email, what day works for you, what time works for you, whatever. If you're using something like Schedule Once or Calendly, which are two low cost and they've got free options available, scheduling apps where basically, so for example, let's say you want to make an appointment with me. I can send you a link. You can click that link and you can see weeks at a time, my available time slots. And you can pick whatever time is convenient for you and get scheduled. And then it goes on your calendar and it goes on mine. And want that simple system, if i.e. if a client needs to schedule with Ray, Ray sends them a link, they click on it, and they pick what's, what time is most convenient for them. So it's systemized. If client and Ray are going to meet, Ray sends a link, they click. The client can then pick what times are most convenient for them. It makes it more efficient. It eliminates that back and forth. It prevents me from ending up double booked. If you're scheduled at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, someone else can't click on the schedule and pick 1 p.m. Also, if I'm trying to manage incoming text messages and phone calls and voicemails and somebody left me a voicemail and said, I'll take Wednesday at 1 and I didn't get that voicemail yet. So now I talk to you and I put you at 1. Now I'm double booked. That simple system. Leveraging technology makes it faster, more efficient, and it prevents mistakes. So you have to be building those simple systems in your business and leveraging technology. That combination is going to make things faster, more efficient, and it's going to prevent you from making mistakes, and it's going to allow you to make more money. Point number three, this one's huge. If you're the expert, you should only be doing the tasks that require the expert. That's point number one. Point number two is you have to spend some time on business development. So if you're the expert and you want a landscape business, you should be doing the high end landscape stuff and the sales the marketing, the business development, strategizing, planning how if you're just got a few homes in a new subdivision, new to you subdivision, how do you go and get more homes in that subdivision? How do you lay out the routes so that when your team goes into service, that subdivision with landscaping, that it's efficient and you're not going past the house to get to house then coming back? It's kind of like the delivery trucks always turn right. So you only do what you're the expert in and then you deliberately carve out time, schedule time to do things like work on your business. And this is, an, this is a huge opportunity to make more money. It's a huge opportunity to cut costs. But unfortunately, so many small business owners really own a job that they never have time to work on the business. They're always working in the business. They're, you know, making phone calls to schedule appointments. They're sending text messages to make a, to make appointments instead of sending a link and letting the clients do it. Time savings. They are out in the field digging the hole instead of working on the business of selling holes. You have to make the time to work on the business. And one of the only ways to do that is to start to get a staff, become more efficient, leverage technology, but you have to start 
if you're going to own a business, working on the business. And what does that mean? You have to understand your profits. You need to understand your expenses. You need to understand where you're making money. You need to understand where you're losing money. You have to start to develop a basic understanding of advertising and marketing. And if you want to grow, you're going to have to do some sales work. And you're going to have to start understanding what it takes to scale your business so that you can grow your profits. A lot of, a lot of times we've had clients that own businesses or really they own a job. They don't fully understand what are their businesses profit centers. What, like, where is the money every month coming into the business? Equally important, they don't understand their operating expenses. You need to spend time. And this, for a lot of folks, means that you've got to put it in your calendar. So what, like, we've told clients that have been successful after working with us, pick one day per week, block out a couple hours in your calendar, and write in there business development. And then what does that mean? Well, now we're going to look at the big picture. What's the business plan? Okay, how do we increase sales? So we're going to get into some advertising and marketing in that block of time. And then how do we manage sales? And again, we're going to systemize these things, just like McDonald's and the Happy Meal. And we're going to get into expenses. What does it cost to operate the business? Why does it cost that much? Are there things we can systemize and leverage technology to lower the cost? And again, if you don't carve time out, if you don't put time in the calendar to do that, it's not going to happen. And a lot of people, because they're the ones that are always digging the hole, they never have time to work on the business. When you start working on the business, you're going to start understanding your profits your losses, you're going to start being able to build a P&L statement and some of the other accounting instruments that, you know, a lot of small businesses look at and say, well, I really don't want to do that. But you have to. That's, that's the path to making more money is you have to make time to work on your business. And part of it is the accounting piece. So there you have it. That's the small, smallbusinesstogrow.com, how to make more money by working less. Three ways to identify if you own a job or if you truly own a business. And if you find yourself in the boat where you're self-employed and really you just own a job, then you're not really making much money. And the only way to make more money is to work more and more and more. Then there's three easy ways to break out of that and to start making the transition from owning a job to owning a business. Many of us that have owned small businesses, we've all gone through this. It's possible. We've done it and you can do it too. Thanks for checking us out.